Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. Recently, hydrogen water has received some attention as having special health benefits. I was skeptical when I first heard of hydrogen water, I will admit. So let's use this review paper, Hydrogen Water, Extra Healthy or a Hoax, published in January this year, to look at the data and you can decide what you think. Hydrogen rich water has been shown to have benefits in health and wellness. The main mechanism appears to be as an antioxidant, and it was also has anti-inflammatory and anti-apoptotic effects. The review includes 25 studies based on human trials. The trials covered exercise capacity, physical endurance, liver function, cardiovascular function, mental health, COVID-19, oxidative stress, and anti-aging. The results are encouraging, but more studies are needed. We will look at some of these in more detail in this video. There is some explanation of the proposed mechanism, but more research in this area is also needed. First off, what is hydrogen water? It is water which has molecular hydrogen dissolved in it. This can be done by putting hydrogen under pressure into the water, but there are other ways, and we will look at these in a moment. Hydrogen forms a stable molecule, H2, which is very small and can dissolve into water. It does not disassociate into hydrogen atoms or ions, but remains as H2 molecules and will remain dissolved in the water for a while. As well as the pressure mechanism mentioned above, it can also be produced from tablets and infusion machines. We will look at these mechanisms in a minute. Once created, hydrogen water can be consumed orally and hydrogen is easily absorbed because it is small and non-polar. It will in fact go through cell walls and even into the mitochondria. It is also effective at small concentrations. Before we get into how to create hydrogen water, a note on concentrations and dosing. The concentration in the studies are either given as parts per million or even parts per billion or millimoles. Assuming that ppm is based on mass, ppm is the same as milligrams per liter, as there are a million milligrams of water in one liter. A mole of molecular hydrogen weighs about two grams, so one millimole is about two parts per million. So to get from parts per million to millimoles, divide by two. Let's have a look at ways to get hydrogen water as a consumer. Note that the image of the commercial products on this site are just examples that I found. I have no affiliation with them and have not tried them. First is a hydrogen infuser. This is a device which requires electricity. You add water, turn it on, and it generates the hydrogen water. At the level of basic chemistry, it uses electrolysis to split water into its component parts of hydrogen and oxygen. The gases produced at the electrodes will join to form molecules, which may then dissolve into the water. Presumably, the device removes the gaseous oxygen in some way and lets the hydrogen bubble up through the water and dissolve. There are also complications with ensuring that the pH does not change, so the diagram on the right is somewhat simplified. I see this kind of device claim to be able to produce hydrogen water of between one and three parts per million. There are tablets which can be placed in water and will effervesce and produce molecular hydrogen which dissolves into the water. These tablets are basically made of magnesium which reacts with the water to create magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. The hydrogen will bubble up through the water and some will be dissolved. I've seen tablets claim up to 8 to 12 parts per million. It is also possible to buy hydrogen enriched water by the bottle in which hydrogen has been already dissolved. I've seen bottled water claim to have 1 to 1.5 parts per million. So let's look at some of the studies and see what they found. First, looking at physical exercise. There have been seven studies or so looking at hydrogen water on physical exercise performance and fatigue. Here is one of them, which was a study with trained and untrained cyclists. The trial looked at the impact of one week's hydrogen water on aerobic and anaerobic exercise capability. There were 37 participants. It was a double-blinded crossover study. So each participant had one week with the placebo and one week with hydrogen water. The hydrogen water was produced using an infuser 
and had a concentration of 1.9 parts per million. The pH was 7.5, so this is alkaline, as a pH of 7.0 is neutral. Two tests were performed, a VO2 max and a maximal anaerobic test. There was no change in the VO2 max, but in the anaerobic, the trained riders saw an improvement in peak power from 766 to 826, and an average power of 350 to 380, which is a 12 and 11% increase respectively. The effect size shown by the D value is medium, but they seem very large in terms of performance improvements. There was also smaller improvements in the fatigue index. From this and other papers, the suggested mechanism could be antioxidant capability and the reduction in acidosis caused by lactic acid buildup because the water was alkaline. Authors of this study stated no conflict in interest. Another study was this one, looking at antioxidant markers and the gut microbiome in teenage female football players in China. The study lasted longer, two months. There were 38 participants, 10 in the control and 28 in the treatment groups. I cannot find any detail on the con concentration of hydrogen in the water or how it was added. Also, the quantity drunk seemed to be up to the participants based on whatever they would normally drink. The hydrogen water group saw a decrease in oxidative stress, as shown by a decrease in malon dialdehyde, a marker of fat peroxidation, and an increase in oxidative capacity shown by the superoxide dismutase levels, among others. Inflammation also decreased with lower interleukin-1 and 6 and TNF-alpha. It also improved the diversity of the gut microbiome. There was one paper that saw no improvement. This was with trained runners in a 4.2 kilometer uphill race, which may be testing the aerobic capacity. So this could agree with the first study, which saw an improvement in anaerobic, but not aerobic results. There was also a study which showed that pre-workout hydrogen could reduce fatigue and help endurance, potentially through mitigating lactic acid buildup. Turning to cardiovascular disease risk, hydrogen water has been shown to reduce blood lipids. In the first study, there were 20 participants, male and female, with an average age of 55, of whom 10 were smokers and 10 were non-smokers. The study lasted 10 weeks, with hydrogen water was produced from magnesium tablets. The hydrogen was 0.2 millimoles, and it had a pH of between 7.8 and 8.2, so it was quite alkaline. The dose was one liter per day. The trial was open label with no placebo group, in the results, they saw 14% decrease in total cholesterol and an 18% decrease in LDLC. Perhaps more importantly, there was a marked decrease in ApoB. For non-smokers, there was no change in glucose and triglycerides. The level of HDLC was not changed, but the authors say that the function was improved. In another open-label eight-week study of 20 participants, patients drank 1.5 to 2 liters of hydrogen water a day. The water was again made with magnesium tablets, but they don't give a concentration for the hydrogen. As in the other studies, there was a significant increase in antioxidant capability. Here, T-bars are a way of measuring oxidative stress. In this case, HDLC was increased by 8%, and the cholesterol to HDLC ratio decreased by 13%. LDLC did change, but it was not to a significant level. In the third study, there were 60 participants, evenly split between men and women. The hydrogen water was at a high concentration of 5.5 millimoles, but was produced from magnesium tablets in a similar way to the other trials. There was a randomized placebo controlled trial for 24 weeks. Total cholesterol was decreased by 8.5 milligrams per deciliter and triglycerides by about 47 milligrams per deciliter. Blood glucose was also reduced from an average of 121.5 to 103.1, which improved HbA1c by 12%. As in previous studies, there was a decrease in inflammatory markers, also in BMI and waist to hip ratio. One last item on CVD. Hydrogen also improved endothelial, that is blood vessel function. 
The reactive hyperemia index is a metric for blood vessel health, which is measured with a peripheral arterial tonometry, a form of pulse wave amplitude. The trial was an RCT with 68 participants, 34 in each group. The intervention was to drink hydrogen water of seven parts per million for 14 days or a placebo. At the end of the 14 days, the RHI improved by 25.4%. The hydrogen water in this case was produced by putting hydrogen under pressure into water. Hydrogen water has also been investigated for its effect on NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. There are a couple of studies which looked at this. Here is one of them. It was a double-blind placebo-controlled crossover trial. There were 12 participants who were overweight and had signs of NAFLD. The average age was 56. The intervention was to drink one liter of hydrogen water or placebo for 28 days. The hydrogen water was generated from, from magnesium tablets and had a concentration of three millimoles. In the study, they used MRI to look at the deposits of fat in the liver and focused on special regions of interest or ROIs. The fat content in region eight was significantly lower at the end for the hydrogen group. The overall fat was reduced by 2.9%, and the AST blood levels, a marker of liver health where lower is better, decreased by 10%. There is one trial which looked at how hydrogen water affects some of the markers of aging. The trial was for six months, with the participants drinking half a litre per day. There were 40 participants over 70 and evenly split between the sexes. The hydrogen water was at 15 parts per million, which is higher than the other studies and probably difficult to get from a consumer device. The telomere length was extended by about 4% in the treatment group. The hydrogen group also saw significant improvements in the chair stand exercise and a couple of metabolites in the brain. A couple of this. In all the papers that I looked at, the authors declared no conflicts of interest which is good to see, though there may, that may not be true for all the papers referenced in the review paper itself, of course. There also seems to be no side effects or safety issues seen in the studies. Hydrogen has also been used in deep sea diving mixed with oxygen at very high concentrations without toxic effects. It's interesting to see the mechanism behind the effects of hydrogen, which seem to be mostly antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and anti-apoptotic. One note on the antioxidant capabilities, hydrogen is selective and targets hydroxyl groups, preferably, which are strong radicals and not scavenged by many other substances. So this may get around some of the concerns with the antioxidants being too effective as some oxidative stress is good. Many of the studies were small pilot studies, so certainly more investigation is required. But some of the results were quite impressive. So it does look like hydrogen water has health benefits and it does appear to be safe. My wife and I used to drink water from an infuser, but it broke, and so we are planning to go and buy another one and restart drinking hydrogen water. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.